honor to be here today and speaking for the Hands Off Syria Coalition. Just to say on my own previous trips to Syria, the most difficult thing is to come back to the United States with a message on the role of the U.S. war and the way in which the United States has instigated um, through many criminal alliances this war on Syria, this effort to completely destroy Syria. And so the formation of the Hands Off Syria Coalition is a huge step forward in building a common understanding within the political movement uh, in the United States of the causes of the war, the reason for the war, and the way toward peace. We're especially honored that Eva Bartlett, uh, a Canadian journalist, and today so appropriate with uh, what's the developments in the General Assembly, that a Canadian journalist is here to respond. Uh, the Hands Off Syria Coalition is a continuing effort to develop this basic political unity and an understanding of the massively destructive war in Syria and the way forward. And as uh, Dr. Bauman was explaining, the 10 city tour is another step. The thousands of signers of this statement and the hundreds of organizations in the United States and internationally have signed on to what is called an urgent message for peace on the eve of wider war. And they have endorsed points of unity that I'll just raise briefly. The statement opens by focusing on the U.S. role. It says, we raise our voices against the violence of war and the enormous pressure of war propaganda. The lies and hidden agendas that are used to justify this war and every past U.S. war. We commit to working together to help achieve four very basic demands. One, an immediate end to the U.S. policy of forced regime change in Syria, including respect for the independence and territorial integrity of Syria. Two, an immediate end to all foreign aggression against Syria. Three, an immediate end to all military, financial, logistical, and intelligence support by the United States, NATO, and their regional allies to all foreign mercenaries and extremists in the Middle East region, and four, an immediate end to the economic sanctions against Syria. This policy, the statement goes on to say that this policy of regime change in Syria is illegal and is a clear violation of the United Nations Charter, the letter and spirit of international law, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a very important thing to remember on the very eve of Human Rights Day. But the most important point of this unity, the hundreds of organizations who have signed, the thousands of individual signers, is a statement, and coming from here in the United States, an important reminder, that it's not our business to support or oppose President Assad or the Syrian government. Only the Syrian people have a right to decide the legitimacy of their government. Only the people of Syria have the inalienable right to choose their leaders and determine the character of their government, free from foreign intervention. So with that, we go forward uh, both in the tours, in the visibility, in the petitions, in the statements, calling for unity, calling for peace, and calling for the right of the Syrian people to their own government, free of foreign intervention. The people of Aleppo want Aleppo to be completely freed. And I speak having been to Aleppo four times, and this is the will of people in Aleppo. I've been many times to Homs, to Maloula, to Latakia, Tartus, um, Siaf, Sueda, and again Aleppo four times. And I mention these because I think it's important people realize I have, in, wherever I've gone, I've spoken in Arabic to the people I'm speaking with. What uh, Donna, what Sarah have said the, that the people support their Armenian government is absolutely true. Whatever you hear in the corporate media is the complete opposite. And on that note, what you hear in the corporate media, and I will name them BBC, Guardian, New York Times, etc., on Aleppo is also opposite of reality. Since 2012, these areas of Aleppo, which have now recently been freed, um, their occupation by these terrorist factions has meant 
the Greater Aleppo, the 1.5 million plus population of Greater Aleppo have suffered sieges denying them food and medicine, they've suffered for years a want of electricity and water, and they've suffered daily bombardment by these terrorists of mortars, of gas canister bombs which are improvised and made locally, of water heater bombs which are even more powerful and can level um, floors and entire buildings, of conventional weapons like grad rockets supplied by the West, and etc. Um, as I said, they've suffered these uh, attacks on a daily basis, and even now, because there are still Western-backed terrorists in pockets of Aleppo, there are still mortars and gas canister bombs raining down, and people are still dying in Aleppo. This is another reason why the liberation and securing of these areas is imperative, because that will actually bring peace to Aleppo. Now, um, my colleagues here mentioned uh, the nature of unity in Syria and the fact that Syrians are see themselves first as Syrian uh, before any sect. This is an important point because our media and the Gulf media has made Syria out to be sectarian, which is something the Syrians themselves have denied. But it's something, it's a tool to make people confused, it's a tool to make people believe that it's Sunnis against Bashar al-Assad, when in fact Bear in mind that Aleppo is overwhelmingly Sunni and is with the government and is with the army and is suffering from the terrorists who declare that they are liberating the city in Syria. Um, other points about Aleppo are um, hospitals in Aleppo have been attacked. I'm sure you've heard in the media that hospitals have been attacked. Well, this media is referring to the pockets of Aleppo that were occupied by terrorists. And they have manufactured stories, and I can give you a precise account. In April of this year, there was a hospital called the Al Quds Hospital which in a concerted effort, all media said, was attacked and targeted and badly damaged by either the Syrians or the Russians. In fact, the Russians had satellite imagery showing that this hospital was in the same shape that it was in in October 2015. No difference. Therefore, it was not attacked. Months later, The Guardian, which is a prominent British newspaper, newspaper actually said the Al-Quds hospital that it had alleged months prior to be attacked and destroyed was treating victims of so-called chemical weapons attacks. So even the media that is lying is inconsistent in their lies. But there have been hospitals attacked. Uh, I went to the al Dabit hospital, which is in Aleppo city. It's a maternity hospital. It was attacked on May 3rd, and three women were killed. You would think this would be something raised at the UN or by so-called human rights groups, but it was not. Uh, in December 2013, the Kindi Hospital was attacked and destroyed. It was the largest and best cancer treatment hospital in the Middle East. It was destroyed by al-Nusra terrorist truck bombings. And in fact, in recent media reports on Aleppo, again alleging Syrian or Russian strikes on hospital, hospitals, Fox News actually had the audacity to use a photo of al-Kindi Hospital and allege that this is in eastern areas of Aleppo that, and that this hospital had been attacked by Syrian or Russian strikes. This goes to show how much the media has been lying from the very beginning about Syria and continues to lie. Um, when I went to Aleppo, I spoke with the Aleppo Medical Association. They comprise 4,160 active and registered doctors. More lies in the media have said the last doctor in Aleppo, the last pediatrician in Aleppo. Of these over 4,000 doctors, 800 of them are specialists. Um, so you can see that when the media talks about Aleppo, it's talking about areas that were occupied by terrorists and it's completely negating the suffering and the will of the Syrian people in Greater Aleppo. Um, on November 4th, we were at the Castello Road humanitarian crossing. This was a day that was meant to allow the people in eastern areas of Aleppo that were inhabited by terrorists to evacuate. And this was not the first time. On prior occasions, the Syrians and the Russians had opened eight humanitarian corridors to enable people to leave. These were attacked by terrorist factions heavily. Even that day on November 4th, the Castello Road crossing was attacked, twice with sh mortar shelling when we were there and five times afterwards. Clearly, there has been political will and intent by the Syrian government and its Russian allies to enable civilians to leave, to minimize any sort of loss of human life. Um, clearly, the terrorists that declare themselves liberators of Syria do not want people to leave. They've been holding civilians hostage. And if you're following reports that are not BBC and that are not New York Times, you will see countless testimonies of civilians, of the 100,000 civilians who've been liberated the last week, saying, thank God for the Syrian Arab army that liberated us, and the terrorists were hoarding food, they were preventing us from having food. This is all documented. Also documented are that areas in these era, um, areas occupied by terrorists, including a school, um, were housing chemicals used to make uh, chemical weapons. 
and you could see also the gas canisters that were used to make ca um, explosive gas canister bombs. In fact, even when I was in Leiramun, we saw a factory in one of the buildings that was used to make gas canister bombs. In Leiramun, we also saw evidence of the so-called Free Syrian Army that some people say doesn't exist anymore. Um, the 16th Brigades was active there. They had a cell underground, three stories below, that was perfectly intact in spite of aerial bombings above ground. And I make this point because people talk about the destruction in Aleppo as if the physical destruction matters. It's the people that the Syrian government and the Syrian people care about. And the destruction in areas occupied by terrorists occurs because the terrorists are bunkering below ground, come up above ground, fire their bombs on civilian populations, and go back below ground. I just want to address a few other myths. Um, some of the myths that have been about Aleppo and Syria in general have been that the Syrian government and army are starving the population. Again, I refer to testimonies of people, even people I met with in November. I met with a family of displaced people from Al Halak, which is north of Bustan Al Pasha, which was an area, both areas occupied by terrorists. At that time, when I met them on November 10th, he told me that they had fled along with about 40 others on about 20 days prior, and that they had tried twice prior to flee, but they were prevented violently so from doing so by the terrorists that inhabited those areas. Um, this is the case, these are the testimonies coming out of Aleppo now. People saying, we tried to flee, they wouldn't let us, they shot at us. There are also videos showing people who did manage to flee coming under fire and the Syrian army actually protecting them, acting as human shields. So that's to say that what we've been hearing in the corporate media is not depicting an accurate uh, image of what's happening in Aleppo. The corporate media is saying that the Syrian army is attacking people and until today the corporate media is maintaining this even though the exact opposite is true. Uh, I would ask you to follow the voices of people in Syria who, like my colleagues here said, they want you to speak the truth. They don't, they're tired of lies. They're very, aware, well, very well aware of the lies that our media is purporting and that our human rights groups are purporting. They want an end to the violence. They don't want this war to continue. They didn't ask for this war. But as uh, my colleagues stressed, Syria is a sovereign nation. It has the right to fight against terrorism. And we know that 101 of 193 UN member states have sent terrorists to Syria to slaughter and destroy. So Syria is fighting a war against terrorism. It's winning in Aleppo, and hopefully, hopefully either the terrorists will accept a deal to be transported out of Aleppo, hopefully they will participate in the Musalaha, the re reconciliation, will lay down their arms, will take the amnesty offered to them by the government, and which has been um, taken by thousands of former militants. And hopefully, above all, the US will stop supporting terrorism and stop funding terrorism 